I showed you the products that I am using to add weight to my freight cars in a recent video. Since then, I have discovered two additional products that I want to tell you about. That's coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. I'm glad you could join me for this quick tip. I think it's extremely important to add weight to your freight cars if they need it. I recently received a bunch of older cars as a gift, and all of them weighed significantly less than the recommended NMRA weight. The result? They wobble around on the track and they derail frequently. You can see the cars laying over here. Slowly but surely, I'm adding weight to them, as you saw me beginning to do in previous videos. I'm also replacing the trucks from them and installing metal wheels to make them run better. The products you saw me using to bring the weight of these cars up to NMRA standards include these wheel weights, which weigh one quarter of an ounce each, BBs, eight of which weigh one tenth of an ounce, lead tape, six inches of which equals one tenth of an ounce, and derby weight, which can be cut with scissors. You saw me using these products in a recent video called How to Add Weight to Your Freight Cars. Link down below. Since uploading that video, I have discovered two other very useful products for adding weight to your freight cars, and I want to tell you about them because you may want to use them too. They are, first, tungsten putty. This product is soft and malleable. Pieces of it can be easily shaped and jammed into small spaces on your freight cars, and it's sticky, so it stays where you put it. And second, liquid gravity. This product consists of tiny balls of metal which are very heavy. You can pour it into small spaces on your freight cars and then glue it there with various types of glue such as super glue or Elmer's white glue. So far I haven't used the tungsten putty. I do plan to use it for adding small amounts of additional weight when needed. But I have used the liquid gravity in these two coal cars, and I have glued it in place using a 50-50 mix of Elmer's white glue and water. I don't want to turn these cars upside down before applying the glue and letting it dry thoroughly, because if I did, I'd have hundreds of tiny balls of metal all over the place. But I can assure you the glue is now dry. Initially, I planned to add weight to the underside of these open-top hoppers but there simply isn't enough space under them to add the amount of weight I need. Besides, I was concerned that if any of those balls of metal fall off the car and onto the track, it might cause an electrical short that could be hard to troubleshoot or other problems on my layout. So reluctantly, I decided to put the weight inside the car like you see here. It was my only choice. I will paint the liquid gravity black and call it coal residue that didn't get fully unloaded. Before adding the liquid gravity, my two coal cars weighed less than one half ounce each. They were grossly underweight and derailed constantly. Now that I have added liquid gravity, they weigh nearly a full ounce each as you can see. That's double their original weight and comes extremely close to the recommended NMRA standard of one ounce. I may add a bit more though because I like my freight cars not only to meet but even to exceed the NMRA standards. But here's something to remember when using this product. The glue that you use to hold the liquid gravity in place also has some weight. As I said, the two coal cars derailed constantly before adding liquid gravity, especially when backing them through turnouts. But since adding the liquid gravity as well as changing the trucks and wheels, they haven't derailed not even once. Let me show you. I'm going to add weight to these gondolas soon. Gondolas are hard to add weight to because there's no place to hide it. Originally, the gondolas all came with coal loads like this, but I don't want to haul coal in gondolas, so I'm prying out the loads. 
Again, adding weight underneath the gondolas isn't an option, as I had hoped it would be. There's just nowhere near enough space in the underframe to add the amount of weight that is needed. So to add weight to the gondolas, I'm planning to pour some liquid gravity onto the floor and cover it with a strip of styrene like this, which I will paint to match the color of the gondolas. I want the gondolas to look like they're empty until they are loaded with something like, say, scrap metal. You might be asking, why don't I just put loads in these open top cars and run them that way? Well, that might bring the cars up to the desired weight, but freight cars don't run back and forth constantly loaded. They should be empty until loaded with some product or material at an industry. Let's say these coal cars should be loaded when running westbound to off layout power plants or ports where the coal is unloaded for shipping to Asia. With not much work, I can fashion loads like this that I'm taking out of the gondolas and use them for the westbound run of the coal cars. And when the coal cars return eastbound from those off layout destinations, I will have removed the loads so that they are now running empty as they head back to the coal mines. Well, it's your railroad. You don't have to use the products that I use to add weight to your freight cars. In the comments section down below, let us know what you do use. Adding weight is one way to make your freight cars run better and look more realistic. We'll be talking about other ways in upcoming episodes. In the meantime, you can go to my playlist about upgrading your freight cars. Each new video in the series gets added to the playlist. There's a link to it down below. Well, thanks for joining me for this quick tip. I'm Roy Smith. Until next time, happy railroading.